I stand before you not as an individual, not as Ibrahim, but as the embodiment of the collective voices yearning for peace, justice, and a future filled with promise for children affected by armed conflict. Today, I speak not only on behalf of children of Borno State or Nigeria, but for every child whose laughter has been stifled by the horrors of war. History has taught us that we children are keen in our pursuit of knowledge and are filled with potential, not only for ourselves, families, communities, but for our country and the world at large. Our situation today has robbed us of this beautiful history, and when a child is robbed of his history, he settles for any future. We all here are living witnesses of how the world, of how Africa today is ravaged by conflict. In the time of conflict and war, our innocent souls bear the brunt of these calamities because of our vulnerability. I can beat my chest and say with vivid clarity, believe me, no one, absolutely no one, can justify the killing of a single child. Can you justify the killing of a single child during conflict? If there's a word that could describe how more than innocent we are, then we will have said it a million times. In the corridors of our vandalized schools, dangerous streets, and within the confines of refugee camps, Believe me, our dreams persist. Our longing for education, safety, and the chance to flourish knows no boundaries, transcending the barriers imposed by conflict and war. Malcolm X said, and I quote, education is the passport to the future, for tomorrow belongs to those who prepare for it today. Today, our classrooms are burned, our teachers killed, our parents brutally murdered. Our roads to school are no longer safe. Our schools that we regard as safe heavens are now battlegrounds, and unfathomable of them old, our innocent souls are taken away from us. Then tell me, how are we preparing for education today? Throughout numerous conferences and discussions, our voices have echoed. Commitments have been made and promises reiterated. However, it's imperative to, acknow to acknowledge that speeches alone cannot heal the wounds of conflict-ravaged childhoods. We convene not solely to express intentions, but to implore each leader and each person here present. The time for decisive action has arrived. Words unaccompanied by tangible actions are just air in motion. Accountability must be the cornerstone for our collective effort. Beyond this gathering, Beyond this day, our call still remains one. Act, implement, and deliver on the commitments made. Leaders, I urge you to heed this plea. We are not just statistics. We are promises of a brighter future. Our well-being, our dreams rest upon the actions taken by those entrusted with power. Let us not fail in our responsibility to protect, nurture, and empower every child affected by conflict. But distinguished ladies and gentlemen, hope springs eternal from the hearts of boys and girls. We gather here not to share tales of sorrow, but to kindle the flames of change. Where there's a will, there's always a way. We cannot change what has happened, but we can fix, we can prevent, and we can secure. The word for crisis in Chinese is Wei J. Wei stands for danger, and J stands for opportunity. As terrible as our situation was, as challenging as the situation of conflict affected children is, I believe it also affords us the opportunity to re-engineer our society into a better place. Now I believe it is obvious what we children expect from this conference. What we expect from this conference is not a repertoire of eloquent speeches or a cascade of promising commitments. Instead, it's the bad place of concrete actions that will sow the seeds of tangible change. This is not merely a meeting of dignitaries. 
It's a solemn opportunity to pave a different path, one where actions speak louder than words. We stand here united in our fervent plea. Let this conference be the prelude, a turning point where impactful actions take center stage. It's time for resolutions to transition into results. We cannot afford the luxury of time. If we don't tackle this today, if we don't take care of conflict-affected children, believe me, they'll end up being the Frankenstein monsters that will consume all of us. The plight of we children demands urgent and tangible solutions. The era of horrible promises must come to an end. This is our clarion call. Actions, not just words, will be the measure of our success. Together, let us embark on a journey, one filled by compassion, driven by solidarity and stirred by the collective determination to rewrite the narrative of conflict-affected children. Let us weave a tapestry of hope and opportunity where the scars of war serve not as shackles, but as reminders of our resilience. Thank you very much.